you sort of alluded uh, to the fact earlier that there might be some sex-based differences in muscle physiology and or protein metabolism. Would, if you were, you know, I guess speaking here to to a woman, would their approach to protein consumption look different to you or I? Well, so the interesting part is, so I, a healthy young individual or even middle-aged individual, we don't really see a lot of differences at the muscle level, right? I was sort of alluding to the fact that the whole body level, there might be some difference in leucine kinetics, okay? But we've never seen anything at the muscle level, all right? So, um, and again, for an endurance athlete, recovering whole body leucine balance might look a little different, but where we're seeing some differential regulation, and this is some recent work that we just published, was in postmenopausal um, females. So, the, um, you know, as we age, there's some differential regulation going on at the level of the muscle, which is kind of interesting. Um, what we showed was, so I sort of talked about um, the remodeling response and protein synthesis being an important driver of that remodeling. So in absence of food intake, okay, so when we're just, when we wake up in the morning, we're in a constant state of turnover, right? So we break down our muscle protein and that breakdown su- providing the, the stimulus for synthesis. Okay. So what we saw in postmenopausal females in before we fed them or before we exercised them, so a baseline, their baseline protein turnover was elevated. Okay. That's interesting because when we exercise or feed them due to that elevation or that ceiling, they're not able to elicit a big response. Okay. So now we're at the initial stages of how do we fix that? (laughs) Um, So you'll see like nothing, nowhere near, you know, the postmenopausal females are nowhere near as extreme, but you see the same thing in hemodialysis patients where they're, they have a high, so kidney disease patients, they have a high, elevated baseline that when you try to exercise or feed them, the signals are just ineffective. Now, postmenopausal females are much, so it's much more mild than that situation. So some of the Dana, the Danes have sort of yet to dive in the literature a little bit, but they're suggestive that estrogen replacement therapy is pretty beneficial. Um, we're not trying, I'm not a pharmaceutical manipulation guy, so we're trying to be a little more clever with nutrition and exercise manipulations to see if we can sort of sneak those signals in there over top that elevated baseline. I mean, we already intrinsically know that older men need a little more volume than younger individuals to elicit a maximal resistance exercise response. All right. So whether or not that's true with postmenopausal females, Maybe we can sneak, you know, maybe we can make it more effective if we put a little more volume, usually by repetitions. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is, like I said, we just published this work. I'm still reflecting on it, um, trying to make sense of it. But this was just recently published uh, last month or maybe this month. I can't remember some of that work. So outside of hormone replacement, in order to to fix that, you're thinking that it's more likely an exercise thing, so increasing volume, as opposed to just increasing protein up to a, a much higher level. Yeah, I think we need to hit them. I think we need some better exercise manipulations. I did in that particular study in these postmenopausal females. We just did a pretty standard at resistance three sets of ten of leg extension, right, which is generally pretty effective in young younger individuals. Um, I don't know. We got it. We got to, I got to figure that out. It's real important that we figure that out. Um, I don't, maybe volume, maybe there's something with the nutritional manipulation, trying to think how we can get a, get a better push on the muscle. Um, is there something we can fortify a food with to, to help, to help push it? You know, can we leverage these food matrix effects? I don't have the answer to that right now, Simon. I need a little more time to reflect on that. But we are seeing differences. I think that's an important area that we need to study, particularly at the aging, uh, you know, these sex-based differences at the at the aging level and at the muscle level, I think is particularly important. Um, 
you know, and it, maybe, maybe it's that, maybe it's just the hormonal replacement. I, I mean, I, you know, with estrogen, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, that's, that seemed to work, but it, there's certainly more, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm not a, that's not my job to, you know, to start prescribing <laughs> pharmaceutical manipulations. I always try to use a nutrition and exercise manipulation first. Um, so I, I'm going to need some time on that to see if I can get something in there for it to work. Oh,